Mark Rogers, TV, back with you following a huge weekend of college football. There were games all over the map that uh, are factoring into conference championship races and ultimately the college football playoff, especially that 330 window was just crazy with Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, North Carolina State, Clemson, Iowa, Ohio State. A little bit later because of the lightning delay, you had Michigan State, Penn State. I was all over the place trying to keep track of it all and the implications concerning the conference races and the college football playoff. So what I'm going to do over the next couple of days is look at each and every Power 5 conference and how it stands right now in regards to what could be the best possible scenario for that conference to get into the playoff or in some instances get two teams into the playoff and what's the worst case scenario for that conference being reasonable. Of course, every contender could lose to the likes of Rutgers and Illinois and Vanderbilt and so forth and so on, taking reasonable situations into consideration. All right, let's start with the SEC, and let's go down the best possible scenario for a conference that right now has the top two teams in the nation, Georgia and Alabama. Okay, so the best possible scenario is for the Bulldogs and the Tide to win out win all their games, get to the SEC championship game, and then play a classic, classic game, especially if Georgia, let's say, being the underdog, stays number one going into that game in Atlanta, and they barely lose to the Tide. 31-30, last second field goal. Okay, so going into championship weekend, the SEC had the top two teams, and then those two teams, both undefeated, play a classic game. Okay, what's going to happen there? Well, then elsewhere, just to help out the cause of the SEC, Notre Dame loses along the way. Also, there are more than one conference out of the Power Five that bring home a two-loss champion. So if Ohio State runs the table as a two-loss champion in the Big Ten, or let's say Clemson stumbles along the way against possibly South Carolina but wins the ACC, or the Big 12 has a two-loss team, win the championship game or out in the Pac-12, USC wins the Pac-12, that would help the cause right there. If that plays out for the SEC with Georgia and Alabama running the table and playing a great game, they might not need any help from any other conference, but it would only help if there were two lost champions elsewhere and Notre Dame was out of the way as well. That's the best case scenario. The worst for the SEC, very unlikely. Auburn runs the table. They defeat Georgia. They beat Alabama in the Iron Bowl. Then they come back and beat the Bulldogs again in a rematch in the SEC championship game. Now, in that case, Auburn could play itself into the college football playoff as a two-loss team. That's quite possible, especially considering the Tigers would have defeated three top 10 teams, two teams, uh, won twice, of course, Georgia, but three games against top five opponents in the span of like four weeks. That would be a great case for Auburn, but they would be a two-loss champion as a conference. And let's say if that happens and Notre Dame wins out and they only have the one loss and one of the best schedules in college football and with the one loss being against Georgia and just by one point, let's say Wisconsin out of the Big Ten goes undefeated and wins the Big Ten with a championship game win over Ohio State. And despite the Badgers' weak schedule to date, it's going to be beefed up in the next couple of weeks against the likes of Iowa and Michigan. And again, a Big Ten championship game against most likely Michigan State or Ohio State. So Wisconsin's undefeated. Notre Dame wins out. And Clemson... Or Miami. Miami goes undefeated. That would be bad for Auburn, of course, and the SEC. Or if the Big 12 emerges with a conference champion with one loss. And I know we are writing off the Pac-12, but if Washington runs through its schedule and the schedule is going to get a bit tougher, not difficult, horrific, but with Washington State and Stanford ahead and then a Pac-12 championship game against most likely USC, Washington's resume would be beefed up quite a bit as well. So that's the worst case scenario for the SEC and most likely Auburn left out. All right, here's what's going to happen. For as much as the probabilities say it's not going to happen based on the ESPN power index and other indicators we see that uh, survey the field and the games and the likelihood of going undefeated and running the table, Alabama and Georgia are that much better than the rest of the SEC. We see it week in and week out. 
Georgia does have a difficult game against Auburn and also a tricky one against a Georgia Tech team that is uh, lightly regarded but pretty tough, especially in this rivalry game. Of course, Alabama's got to deal with Mississippi State this week and Auburn. But Bama and Georgia will win out. And basically, the conference just needs a close championship game to a certain extent. Maybe not a classic, but let's say Alabama wins by two scores. But it's a good game. They win by 10 points, 27 to 17, something like that. And elsewhere, there just needs to be some issues with either Clemson winning the ACC with two losses or Ohio State or Michigan State with two losses winning the Big Ten or a two-loss champion coming out of the Big 12, whether that's TCU or Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, whoever it is. And then the situation in the Pac-12, if USC wins with two losses and runs the table in the Pac-12, then that sets up nicely for the SEC. Georgia would get the nod over a two-loss team in another conference, even though they won the championship. They would have one loss, and that would be to the number one team in the country, and it would be a competitive game. And Georgia would have the nod in scheduling over Notre Dame and the head-to-head, I should say, over the Irish. So... That's what's going to happen. The SEC gets in two. It's Alabama, it's Georgia. Tide wins the SEC title game in Atlanta. Georgia drops to four, but they make it in because there are other losses that ensue, especially in the Big 12, the Pac-12, and the Big 10. Those are my thoughts on the college football playoff scenarios as it relates to the SEC. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for the very best in college football coverage, just not from myself, but if you survey the videos, from the very best bloggers and broadcasters we can find in the nation. All right, we enjoy your comments as well. The analysis just doesn't come from me. Again, bloggers and broadcasters, but also from you. If you check out the comments section, sometimes you guys have the best discussion and debates going. Right here on Mark Rogers TV.